Welcome to Reading the Psalms. My name is Dan, and I'm going to read Psalm 69 today, another Psalm of David. Save me, O God, for the waters are come into my soul. I sink in deep mire where there is no standing. I am come into deep waters where the floods overflow me. I am weary with my crying, and my throat is dried. Mine eyes fall while I wait for my God. They that hate me without cause are more than the hairs of my head. They that would cut me off, being mine enemies wrongfully, are mighty. Then I restored that which I took not away. O God, thou knowest my foolishness, and my sins are not hid from thee. Let not them that wait on thee be ashamed through me, O Lord God of hosts. Let not those who seek thee be brought to dishonor through me, O God of Israel. Because for thy sake I have borne reproach. Shame has covered my face. I am become a stranger unto my brethren, and an alien unto my mother's children. For the zeal of thine house has eaten me up, and the reproaches of them that reproach thee are fallen on me. When I wept and chastened my soul with fasting, that was to my reproach. When I made sackcloth my clothing, I became a proverb unto them. They that sit in the gate talk of me, and I am the song of the drunkards. But as for me, my prayer is unto thee, O God, in an acceptable time, O Lord, in an acceptable time. O God, in the multitude of thy mercy, answer me in the truth of thy salvation. Deliver me out of the mire, and let me not sink. Let me be delivered from them that hate me, and out of the deep waters. Let not the water flood overwhelm me, neither let the deep swallow me up, and let not the pit shut her mouth upon me. Answer me, O Lord, for your loving kindness is good. According to the multitude of your tender mercies, turn thou unto me, and hide not thy face from thy servant. For I am in distress. Answer me speedily. Draw nigh unto my soul and redeem it. Ransom me because of mine enemies. Thou knowest my reproach, and my shame, and my dishonor. Mine adversaries are all before thee. Reproach has broken my heart, and I am full of heaviness. And I looked for some to take pity, but there was none. And for comforters, but I found none. They gave me also gall for my meat, and in my thirst they gave me vinegar to drink. Let their table before them become a snare, and when they are in peace, let it become a trap. Let their eyes be darkened that they see not, and make their loins continually to shake. Pour out your indignation upon them, and let the fierceness of your anger overtake them. Let their habitation be desolate, let none dwell in their tents. For they persecute him whom thou hast smitten, and they tell of the sorrow of those whom thou hast wounded. Add iniquity unto their iniquity, and let them not come into thy righteousness. Let them be blotted out of the book of life, and let and not be written with the righteous. But I am poor and sorrowful. Let your salvation, O God, set me up on high. I will praise the name of God with a song, and magnify him with thanksgiving. And it shall please the Lord better than an ox, or a bullock that has horns and hooves. The meek have seen it and are glad. Ye that seek after God, let your heart live. For the Lord hears the needy, and despises not his prisoners. Let heaven and earth praise him, the seas, and everything that moves therein. For God will save Zion and build the cities of Judah, and they shall abide there and have it in possession. The seed also of his servants shall inherit it, and they that love his name shall dwell therein. This is a big psalm. When I last made notes about this psalm, my last entry was, What a dreadful, sorrowful psalm. I think... My slight modification to that note is now, what a beautiful, sorrowful psalm. This well captures my emotions and and feelings, trying to love in a time of fear and outrage, trying to help in a time of reactive extremes. Are you being hurt uh, by your work to love others? To, to live with a Christ-like love, do you feel hurt? I feel that way. I feel that way sometimes and, and lately. And honestly, when I read through the psalm, I think, to my sorrow, I guess that's the way it's supposed to be. 
In verses 9 and 21 in particular, we see how this psalm perfectly relates to our Christ, our Messiah, the great work that he did on our behalf, and what was the result of his great work of love, but rejection and hurt and sorrow. In verses 22 through 28, there is a call for vindication voiced in this psalm. And when I put this psalm into the voice of Jesus, I can see the justice in that cry. We know it is right, because those who were against Christ were against God. But in our sorrow, what should we do with those cries? I try to let them inform me uh, the reality and the danger of uh, in store for those who are opposing God's work. But the psalm also makes me want to try to slow down my heart, slow down my passions, to not sincerely seek out that kind of vindication, but rather, but rather continue on with godly devotion and hope. Because right after those cries for vindication in 22 through 28, David moves into the great work of hope and love that he has uh, in God for himself. And, and that is where we need to, uh, need to abide. That's what we need to hope in. Let's read it again. Save me, O God, for the waters are come into my soul. I sink in deep mire where there is no standing. I am come into the deep waters where the floods overflow me. I am weary with my crying. My throat is dried. Mine eyes fall while I wait for my God. They that hate me without cause are more than the hairs of my head. They that would cut me off, being mine enemies wrongfully, are mighty. When Then I restored that which I took not away. O oh God, thou knowest my foolishness, and my sins are not hid from thee. Let not them that wait on thee be ashamed through me, O Lord God of hosts. Let not those that seek thee be brought to dishonor through me, O God of Israel. Because for the sake of... For thy sake have I borne reproach. Shame has covered my face. I am become a stranger unto my brethren, and am an alien unto my mother's children. For the zeal of your house has eaten me up, and the reproaches of them that reproach thee are fallen on me. When I wept and chastened my soul with fasting, that was to my reproach. And when I made sackcloth my clothing, I became a proverb to them. They that sit in the gate talk of me, and I am the song of the drunkards. But as for me, my prayer is unto thee, O Lord, in an acceptable time. O God, in the multitude of your mercy, answer me in the truth of your salvation. Deliver me out of, out of the mire, and let me not sink. Let me be delivered from them that hate me, and out of the deep waters. Let not the water flood overwhelm me, neither let the deep swallow me up. And let not the pit shut her mouth upon me. Answer me, O Lord, for your loving kindness is good. According to the multitude of your tender mercies, turn thou unto me, and hide not thy face from your servant. For I am in distress. Answer me speedily. Draw nigh unto my soul, and redeem it. Ransom me because of mine enemies. You know my reproach, and my shame, and my dishonor. Mine adversaries are all before you. Reproach has broken my heart, and I am full of heaviness. And I looked for some to take pity, but there was none, and for comforters, but I found none. They gave me also gall for my meat, and in my thirst they gave me vinegar to drink. Let their table before them become a snare, and when they are in peace, let it become a trap. Let their eyes be darkened, that they see not, and make their loins continually to shake. Pour out your indignation upon them, and let the fierceness of your anger overtake them. Let their habitation be desolate, let none dwell in their tents. For they persecute him whom you have smitten, and they tell of the sorrow of those whom you wounded. Add iniquity upon their iniquity, and let them not come into your righteousness. Let them be blotted out of the book of life, and not be written with the righteous. But I am poor and sorrowful. Let your salvation, O God, set me up on high. I will praise the name of God with a song, and magnify him with thanksgiving. And it shall please the Lord better than an ox or a bullock that has horns and hooves. The meek have seen it and are glad. 
You that seek after God, let your heart live. For the Lord hears the needy and despises not his prisoners. Let heaven and earth praise him, the seas and everything that moves therein. For God will save Zion and build the cities of Judah, and they shall abide there and have it in possession. The seed also of his servants shall inherit it, and they that love his name shall dwell therein. It might be that the great conflict for David here is not just the pain coming at him from others, but what he voices in verses 6 and 7. Let not them that wait on thee be ashamed through me, O Lord God of hosts. Let not those that seek thee be brought to dishonor through me, O God of Israel. Because for thy sake I have borne reproach, shame has covered my face. Really, I guess it's verse 6. But the idea of let not my behavior tear others from you, O God. Whether it is the pain that others inflict on me, let that sight not discourage others. And even probably more so, let not my reactions to those who hurt me drive people from you, O God. And that's my call, and that's my prayer. Let not my reactions and anger and frustration when others hurt me take people from you, O God. Well, thanks for listening in. Hope to talk to you again soon.